Over the past few years, the two major manufacturers of CPUs, AMD and Intel, have been using two very different approaches to how they design their chips. Intel has been offering more clock speed in their CPUs. Now they're offering CPUs with clock speeds at 5 gigahertz across all cores, while AMD has been adding massive amounts of cores and threads to their processors. So in this video, we're going to take a look at clock speed and see just how beneficial it actually is. Since the 9900KS, Intel has started to offer CPUs that can be clocked at 5 GHz or higher across all of their cores. The clock speed of a CPU roughly translates to how many instructions per second that that CPU can process. So if higher clock speeds mean faster computers, why don't all CPUs offer this 5 GHz clock speed? Well, for one, the clock speed really isn't all that goes into making a CPU faster. Things like how many instructions can be processed per clock cycle and how those instructions are actually handled tend to matter a lot more. You can do things like breaking up a single instruction into multiple parts that can be worked on simultaneously or combining smaller instructions into fewer operations so that they can all be completed within fewer clock cycles. There is also a bit of a trade-off when you push high clock speeds. If your clock speed is higher, then the CPU is going to consume more power as well as generate more heat. And heat is really difficult to dissipate from a CPU. And another limitation is that you cannot actually pack on as many cores or threads as you would normally have in a high clock speed CPU. Because, well, when you're packing all of those cores together and they start to get hot as high clock speeds do, you're going to end up with a thermal nightmare. This is why Threadripper CPUs, for example, have pretty low clock speeds with boost clocks that only go up to about 4 GHz, and most other CPUs, their base clocks are much higher than that, but the Threadrippers are able to offer 32 or even 64 cores in some cases. So these high-speed CPUs are really going to shine in applications where a high core count isn't as necessary, but high clock speeds are. So that means things like graphic design, rendering, virtualization, intense multitasking, and server processes are all out. But gaming on the other hand, gaming could be what carries these high clock CPUs. I mean, after all, gaming has such a high influence on the PC marketplace. That's the primary reason why you see so many cases that have a transparent side panel and computer parts that all have RGB LED lights on them. Now most games aren't very CPU intensive to begin with. They tend to rely more on the graphics card than anything else. And the few games that are CPU intensive, they usually don't benefit from a processor that has four or even more than eight cores. Beyond that, the only thing you really get are multitasking benefits, say if you wanted to stream a game and have a web browser open at the same time that you're playing. So let's take a look at some benchmarks to see how much of a difference clock speed really makes. And credit for this video goes to the YouTube channel Benchmark, who created these benchmarks with a 9900K and an RTX 2080 Ti.
the tea, Richie. There's some real speed in this race, Anna. We knew they were gonna bring it. This is the league we're going for here. Come on, guys. This is ours. when I found this photo of the Pacific Ocean. I just knew for some reason that we were going to go there in the end. All these rivers, mountains, deserts, they just won't do. It's ocean or bust. I believed we could make it. I did. I know I'll get there, and if I need some help, you'll be there for me. You will save me again, won't you? <coughs> Artyom, please, stop torturing yourself. It hurts to even look at you. You and Dad, too. It's not your dream, and not his belief in the occupying forces. It's just fate. So in conclusion, does clock speed actually matter? Not really. In the majority of applications, a computer is used that there are really no difference between having a lower clock speed and a higher clock speed, at least in the clock speeds that we see on most consumer CPUs these days. And there's a lot of downsides to the lower core count. Obviously, if you need to do things like rendering, virtualization, any of those type of workflows, they're going to suffer greatly from that low core count. Gaming is the only area where you're really going to notice a difference, but even then, the margins between 4 and 5 gigahertz are very small. Not to mention that improvements in the CPU architecture itself is going to have much more impact, as we saw with the recent AMD CPU and GPU launches. Because of things like smart access memory and rage mode, a full AMD setup is able to outperform Intel and Nvidia setups in most games despite a lower clock speed. So, hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching to the end. Have a nice day.